you better Adam and Eve it. This is episode two. We're here to pull your Alan Wickers down every week, joined by two <laughs> baked beans of rugby league, a man with one of the dodgiest Barnet fairs in the game. But he's got a lovely boat race and what a pair of mince pies. Hello to you, Mark Flanagan. Mark's been sat on his bottle and glass all week, cast aside by Salford, his number 13 shirt taken away from him as he watched on from his living room. <laughs> oh, that's cold brutal. and lonely. Cold and lonely. Long pause, what are you pausing they for? They are the simple brass tacks. But he's still getting paid plenty of bread and honey and has no problem paying his Duke of Kent £140,000 a year. He's clearly taking the gypsy's kiss out of all of us. A butcher's hook to my right. And there's my old China plate, John Wilkin. He's traded in his cows and kisses for Sonny Ball Williams, blowing a laugh and a joke up Sonny's Kyber Pass. His bomb. Where the current oh, bun don't shine. Our guest this week has huge dog's meat. <laughs> yep, you might have seen him on the custard and jelly. He's our baker's dozen from St. Helens. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the former Millwall hooligan, Louis McCarthy. Says a man dressed like a football hooligan. Scarsbrook. Do we, do we clap? Do we clap again? Thank you. No, no. I need to clap. We just I feel like I'm down south. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Welcome along, Louis. Thank you. Um, you sound posh. The name Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook sounds no, like... When you could have gone to Eton barrel, with Boris Johnson. Yeah, you double barrel a name. Mm. It usually insinuates wealth. Yeah. But I can guarantee you with Louis, <laughs> that's not the case. That is not the Loads case. of money. Loads <laughs> of money. <laughs> Loads of money. So you idiots all played together at St. Helens. Who's yes. the, the, the tightest there again? We always use the sort of saving from a fire from a burning building. The tightest? John, John Who would you the pick out the of? Closest, Who would you pick? To survive. To yeah. survive. To, oh, to survive. Oh, yeah. 100% Wilco. Why? Yeah, more laughs with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, longer. Longer laughs. Longer friendship. Longer Yours laughs. was shorter, burnt out. Yeah, yeah, yeah but if they fizzled. were the same duration, which would you pick? No, that's not a question, though, is no, it? No, it's, yeah, it's no. Different, different. No one likes you. Oh, Go with him. Fuck off, man. <laughs> well, Mark, Easy. we won't have any of that sort of language. Sorry. We'll leave that to Sorry. LMS. You're better than that. Um, yeah, I am. What have you been up to? Hanging Louis? around with him too much. Louis, what have you been up to? Uh, Pre-season, yeah. looking after four kids. Four uh, kids? Oh, my God. <laughs> get <laughs> sn- yeah. Just get the snip. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Because when I find a new wife, ah. which is probably going to wrap them. Respect. Yeah. Jess again, is then. definitely Start watching again. this as Start well. Again. 100%, yeah. yeah. She yeah. probably knows I'm going to find a You'd new You'd be one. in the dog ass She's probably going to kick me out. Yeah. So these boys gave me that line that you're a Millwall hooligan. That's where it all started, the Isle of Dogs. Yeah. I wish I was a hooligan. <laughs> never, never been in. But you are. Are you a, Mil- are you a football <laughs> man? Are you a Millwall yes, fan? Yes, yes, I am. You That's are. why I wish we could talk about football. Is in a rugby league? We can do it. So, yeah. so, you, so you grew up going down to the den watching yep. Millwall. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Then so I was all right. Got played for a team called Millwall Albion, which was uh, in Millwall Park in yeah. East London, uh, and used to get free tickets. So goalkeeper, go weren't down you? Goal goalkeeper, outstanding goalkeeper. John didn't know that. No, outstanding. So like, the cat. Anyone listening, watching will be wondering how the hell a journey like that from a, a London boy, from a, not just a London boy, I mean, you can get more authentic London than the Isle of Dogs. Is, is the Isle of Dogs, just for my like, clarity as a northerner, the Isle of Dogs like is Cockney it? Central? Is that Pretty much, isn't it? What, what, that defines, London, but what defines Cockney? Where, when you're a Cockney, do you, you have, have to be, be from... born in the sound of Bow Bells. Okay. So you have to be born in London Hospital, which Bow Bells is just up the road, okay. which I was. Yeah. Uh, and on my first born, because I was still like, oh, London. Uh, I played the Bow Bills when he was born. So yeah. there. So he's technically a Cockney. Right. The others. Is yeah. that how it works? The others yeah. couldn't bother. They're scousers. They're scousers. They're scousers, yeah. <laughs> but your missus is a southerner. Yeah, she's south. Yeah, south yeah. east. So. And, but the kids must have northern accents now. They've been up here that long, haven't they? That, well, the oldest Rudy does. He goes from Brummie. Then Brummie? he'll, go, then he'll go down. I don't know why. He goes down south and then he come, becomes Cockney again. <laughs> and comes back up here and goes Brummie. So Mank. So it's Brummie or <laughs> Cockney. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. yeah, yeah. So we had Sam Burgess on last week, whose his accent's all over the place. One minute he's sort of uh, proper no, Dewsbury. It's not all over the place. It's just Australian. Is it? Just yeah, no. There's a bit of Yorkshire. Aust- rubbish, ob- no, Australian. No, no. It's, it's like fully put on Australian. But I've already yeah. noticed that uh, Louis, when he swears, and you're a bit of a swearer, aren't you? You've got a periodic swearing chart in your kitchen. Yes. Yeah. Got a birthday gift. So I put it up in the kitchen so the kids can learn from the an kids learn the sea bomb yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet. I think the wife would. Uh, the wife would t- they've lie. heard it. They've heard yeah. it, but they know not to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how to parent your children. The clear distinction between setting a bad example <laughs> and making sure they know not to copy. Champions yeah, but once you have four, then you at least one of them might succeed. Oh, you've learned. You've yeah, learned. Yeah. At least one of them might. Yeah. yeah, the others. Yeah. 
So, so you, so this, this is what this is the connection I'm trying to make. All the re- I can make sense of the last 10, 15 years, but from your journey from the Isle of Dogs to playing for at the time London Broncos, they were then renamed Harlequins and then back to London Broncos. How did you suddenly get interested in rugby league being a Millwall boy? Well, by, well it was like by chance. I think I've told this story so many times. It was like a supply teacher coming to a school. So I went to a school in South, uh, South London, Lewisham. Mm called St. Joseph Academy. It's not there no more because it wasn't a really good school. Mm. Uh, went there, supply teacher came in from up north, Mr. Hogg, and uh, he Hoggy. said, he said, yeah, well, he said to me, you're, you're, you're not that smart, you're quite big, use free, go down and try rugby league. So really? me and a couple of boys went down there and we had a fight in the game and then <laughs> oh, yeah. so brilliant. It, yeah. it doesn't sound like a great retention like, <laughs> like as a tool for recruiting rugby players like what's the checkbox are you smart no are you big yes are you technically unemployable yes <laughs> do you like to play rugby league yes that's, that's, that's <laughs> worldwide though isn't it and then, yeah. and then I'm up here talking to you on the, a, on who, was this game, who was this game for <laughs> Oh, it was just like a trial game because they needed to get like a... At the Broncos Academy? Yeah, because Broncos didn't have like a, uh, a youth system or nothing coming yeah. through. So they needed to start under 16s and 16s. And who were the other two? Mike Warrensey. Yeah. Uh, and his brother, Rob. Oh, they're, so they're both... Uh, Rob's still playing. Rob's still playing. They? Mike's yeah. in uh, Australia now. He's missing right. his kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the first time you ever played was a, a trial for London. Yeah, yeah. So it was just... It was... Here's a ball. Run with it. But you didn't, but know, any, you didn't know the rules. You didn't all know the kids there, it was the first time yeah, playing yeah, a trial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was just so, to explain to you on the spot the rules. I mean, how because that must have, it's got to take years and years to. He still struggles a bit. To understand them fully. No, no. If we're being honest, you still struggle a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> rugby league, Will, is drafts. Rugby union is chess. No. Chess and checkers. So drafts is very simple. Like it, the, the, One of the keys to our sport, actually, that we don't leverage all that much, is mm. that it's actually relatively simple to pick up. Yep. If, you, if, you, if you're big and quick, Louis, big and, and quick, imagine just run. when you first got the ball and you run and you're really athletic, mm. it must have been quite a comfortable sort of sport for you to go into. Yeah, it was easy, really, because it was easy to pick up. Instead of going union and knowing when to get in and... Get out. Get out, <laughs> yeah, get in, get out, and <laughs> present the ball, whatever it is. But no, it was just play the ball, throw it between your legs. But I'm fascinated then. So you played that game, and then who actually thought this, that you've got a talent? And who convinced you, your family, that you could make a career out of this? Well, then it was it was Phil Jones, who was head of uh, recruiting for London, like the academy. He was mm. head of the academy down there, and he came to us and said, come, let's go and, go and play for London and the South, which I did. And, and what age were you here? 16, 16, 16, 15, 16, yeah. And what were your other options at that time? Obviously not goalkeeping. That wife of the crime, no, no. probably. Uh, well, well, it was going to be a spark. I thought, yeah, yeah, just okay. be a spark. Uh, and then that got binned off because we had to train in uh, Osterley, which was yeah, yeah. North London. Yeah. So we had to go, I had to go from East London to North London. And that was two and a half hours on train and all that, getting over there. Uh, so then I just said, oh, thingy. But they were paying me. What, 50 quid a, a game? So yeah. I was like, well, happy. And when do you go to Hull FC on loan? Uh, on loan. Because I remember playing the, against you. Because they didn't have a 21s. London didn't have a 21s. Yeah. Because I think back then it was only, they needed to have like a 16s and an 18s. Yeah. 21s. So we went up there. Me, Addy had a BC, Ian Lane, and Mike Warrensey. So what did you make of that sport? You've come into a sport which is obviously predominantly northern, even more so back then than, than it is these days. What did you think you were getting into? I mean, did you. Did you just feel completely alienated from, from everyone else who was all of them up north apart from the Bronco? Well, no, tell the truth, I think it was just like a... It was by chance I got into it. So it was like, oh, I didn't, didn't, I didn't have a clue what was what it was. So I, all I knew is I was getting paid money to <laughs> to play it. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. So we go up there, play. If we win, we get, we get more money. If we didn't, then we still get 50 quid. So it was win-win for me <laughs> back then. So I was like, yeah, sweet. And then not long after, St. Helens come calling. Yeah. How how did that come about? Uh, well, I was at a contract with London, uh, and at the time, Brian Mack was there, uh, and he was he was going to Leeds, so I thought, oh, well, I might as well just see what's out there. Dipped the fishing rod in the line, a couple of people bit, met Eamon, got on well with him, bought me a beer, so I went, ah, sweet, let's go out there. <laughs> London would have wanted to keep you though at that t- that time because you were probably is that when you played for England when you yeah. played at Broncos? Yeah, yeah, no, well, they, yeah, they did come in and they wanted to keep me, but I thought. Back then, well, back then I got bitten by the bug because I wanted to win things. I yeah. thought to myself, I don't want to stay at a club. A lot of people were going that year. So, like, Danny Orr was going going back away. He was like a he was like a role model to me, really. Mm. 
uh, he lived with me for six months in a house before he got his ass down there. So he took me under his wing and he, he said, he said, you've got to take the game and if you want to win things, you've got to move on. And I spoke to like Purdom and all that, saying, what should I do? And he said, well, once Saints come knocking, just just go up there, just go and test yourself. See, that's interesting what you said there, because you, like, originally you painted the picture just to throw away line, like I was either going to be an electrician or just getting paid to play rugby, but you, you mentioned winning, so you obviously had that in you instilled in you, which isn't in everyone, is it? No, no, I think I think you have to you have to you have to want to win. Otherwise, there's no point. No point. I need sword then. Yeah, and he did. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, well the There's no point playing a sport if you don't want to win. Mm. You don't. You don't play the sport unless you want to. No, it's not about taking part. Is no, it? it's not about That's taking like part. You don't. Biggest you don't, yeah. nonsenses of sport. Yeah. But no one coaches that to you. That's the. That's what my point is. You don't, yeah. You don't, no. You don't, yeah. Well, I think. Yeah, that comes from like your mum and dad and all. That. I think. I was lucky enough. I come from, from a good family where my mum and dad like. Love you and all that. I mean, mum and dad was a judo. She won like a bronze medal in like the Bridget European did. championships and all that. Mum yeah. the European yeah. championships. European championships, yeah. Wow. So she was like does, always dedicated your mom, to. Your mum would have judo thrown your dad around a fair yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Big Pete, yeah. hence Male why model Louise Pete. 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 And, yeah. and then yeah, and then, then I obviously got my dad, who's just a model. The right Jack, model, Jack, right Jack, right Jack of all trades. And he couldn't be more Louis' dad. Couldn't be more silverback, alpha male, Cockney, London. He's like, yeah. like all his mates that, are like that as like, well. Like massive hands, huge, Geezer. just big. You know, which one's McCarthy? Which one's Scarsbrook? Scarsbrook's my old man, and McCarthy's obviously. So yeah. hold on, we, we just glossed over the fact that his mother's a European judo champion. No, we haven't. We, we did you know that? It in a really weird <laughs> sexual innuendo about <laughs> yeah, that Louis' mum throwing, throwing his dad around. Yeah. He loved the tone. Yeah, yeah. So oh, you, back. you came from a sport. <laughs> you, came from, <laughs> you came from a sporting family. So yeah, that, no, that, yeah. That's obviously been maybe subconsciously instilled in you then from a young age because yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. I think obviously mum and dad have worked hard to to do what they did and they worked hard to look after me and my sister and I think that does does instill stuff in you. Mm. Uh, but it's funny, isn't it? When, when, I think when you're young and you become good at something, the positive reinforcement you get from, say you do something and you're good at it and people go, well done. Mm. It's like Pavlov's dog, that's conditioning, isn't it? And you, got, boom, you get like this endorphin tick down the back of your head, mm. which means, oh, like I get recognition from doing that well. Mm. And then I reckon in life, if you do something well when you're young, you want to do it more. Mm. People tell you you're better at it, and it becomes this traveler of, you know, you, you do it more, you get better at it, you become more competent at it. Yeah. Whereas it's that initial decision to play, Louis, yeah. that probably started that journey. You, I reckon you could have been competent at anything because athletically you, you, you're gifted. But the interesting thing for rugby league, Will, is that that first interaction with sport, like proper, where he felt this positive like reinforcement mm. of doing it well was rugby league i just wonder how many chances we're missing as a sport to get athletes like and you. it's probably yeah. a simplicity that you alluded to before that makes an athlete like louis take play it once and his athletic attribute just comes to the fore because it's so simple to play at a young age yeah yeah and it's, it's quite big as well in schools in london isn't it yeah it's, oh, it's massive yeah. like 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 you're saying then i didn't really get bitten by the bug till i was about 20. Mm. and i went do you know what I could, I could probably get. I probably earn a living out of this. It wasn't until then. Yeah, I, I was just. Pl I was playing it just, just to hang around with my mates and fifty quid, get fifty quid, and buy new yeah. pairs of trainers. That was it back in the day. So at twenty, did you think that? Because I always find these bits fascinating in terms of hindsight being a wonderful thing. But back then, did you think that you could have carved the career like you have done and still going in your thirties? Well, to be fair, if it weren't for Mako come in and rollocked me <coughs> first of all and told me like, if you want to do something, you got to do this, this and this. Yeah. Then I don't think I went, I went, well, oh, don't don't know if I wanna don't know if I wanna do this. I'll go and just go and be a builder and probably earn the same mm. amount of money. So, so was Brian McDermott a, you I'm reading into it, he was a big influence then. Yeah, on I think you yeah, no, the Mac, Macca, Macca behind the scenes was, was very big. I think mm. he's the one that pushed me to do uh push push me to play play well, if you know what I mean. Like you said, like you're a dog and you just wanna be Known that you're a really good dog and get stroked behind the ear every now and then. <laughs> so that's what I was. I was like, near Mac, you're nice. What were, the, what were the things that he said? <laughs> Big ears as well, aren't they? Yeah. What were the things that he said you've got to do yeah, yeah. Louis, to, to get where you've got to? Well, lose weight, first of all. Cause yeah, I was, you're, I was a, you're a big boy I when I played. I was about 110 against. back then. Yeah, yeah big, 110 big round now. thing. Yeah, what are you now? So 100. So, uh, but yeah, like lose weight. And I uh, think we did, we did many, uh, many a concessions one on one with Macca. Uh, Any boxing with him? 
boxing with him, yeah. So yeah, it was always good. Does he still, still play a big part in your life now? Do you keep in touch with him? I know. Well, see him at games every now and then. That's about it, yeah. Say yeah. hello. But Macca's not one of them when you keep in touch. You just say hello to Macca. Oh, is he? Right, yeah. Not got yeah. much chat. No, no. It's just He, ma it's he, just mentioned, he yeah. mentions you every, pretty much every day, actually. No, he doesn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never mentioned Louis once. I actually didn't know he'd coached Louis. That's the first time I've heard it. <laughs> I'm joking. So I'm interested I'm in the joking. first meeting between you two. Wilkin and McCarthy scars, but when you first God. we played came we face played to face for a long time, didn't we? Long, didn't realise when what what year did you sign at Saints? You were a year before me. Eleven. You're eleven. You yeah, eleven. Yeah. So we did eight years. Yeah. So go on. So had the, 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 the you're all there. What was that? I did, oh, was that Royce's first that, year? Royce's first year. Yeah. Royce's first year. Did you think who the what the hell is this we were guy? At witness. About? Witness. Yeah, right? That was we witness. witness. We played at witness. Yeah. Played at witness. Who did, what did I think? Who the hell was this guy? No, I played against him, so you had an understanding of him. Yeah. Um, the first thing I probably thought about Louis is I couldn't believe how athletic he was. I know we keep saying this, mm. but for people who don't realise, like Louis big, he's a hundred kilos. Is that just because you're not very athletic? Yes, probably. Mm. As me and you, not and Mark, not very <laughs> athletic. <laughs> Louis very athletic. That's how life works. It's Some true. people are better at things than others. Mm. Like if we had Chappers here, this would be a better podcast. But we've got you, <laughs> so that's fine. He's genetically blessed, Chappers, though, isn't he? Yeah. What Chappers? Yeah, he is. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. Chappers are talented. Not sure about that one. No, but Louis. Yeah, yeah. But it, for the size of him, I, mm. I couldn't believe how mobile he was. And I think a big key to Louis being successful and as successful as he's been, and be as consistent as he's been, is how mobile he's been. Mm. Like, my, and the the way the game's evolved in, during my time is. Being mobile is is the biggest asset you can have. It's not strength. It's not being able to move weight. It's like that. That stuff is is part of the picture, but it's not the biggest part of the picture. Louis' speed, leg speed, ability to move around the park is the reason why he's been. Well, that's the first thing I noticed yeah, actually yeah. when we played at Witness. Is like this guy can shift, you know. Well, you can play front row, back row, centre, can't you? Yeah. Well, all those positions you can play well. I don't think there's many players in the game. They could play. Obviously, he gets a bit lost at times and doesn't know when to pass Always the ball. Get lost. <laughs> but get if you put him in a position, say you, this is you today, he'll he'll he'll, he'll kill it. Yeah. Do you think he's gone under the radar, underrated, because of his versatility? No. Probably over <laughs> overrated. In terms, in terms of <laughs> consistency, overrated? can you go over the radar? <laughs> How do you go over the radar? Uh, it's just really going over the rainbow, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just thinking under the radar. Yeah, no. Submarine. He's, 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 he's sort of submarine. in the stratosphere. He's, he's, not on the the he's not on the radar. Yeah, no, he's above the radar. <laughs> <laughs> he's just orbiting the planet perpetually. But you know what no. I mean? No, no, he's, he's um, I think, look, he's had a fantastic, he's had, he had a fantastic career. There's not many people get to have a testimonial year at St. Helens. There's even fewer Cockneys have a testimonial year at St. Helens. Yeah, and that, true. that, you don't stay at a club like Saints for that period of time if you're not competent or what you do. Louis has been amazingly competent but that was a funny year wasn't it Louis with Royce that was funny it was a funny year, good year. it was a good year I I enjoyed it because I signed I didn't know who the coach was mm. and I said oh who's the coach going to be like to Eamon and he he went oh I don't know yet so I was like right, but he, go, he goes I'm signing you and I went yeah all right, sweet <laughs> take that take that do you remember <laughs> the argument that you were up on a disciplinary right so you've got a picture of this scene Louis was up on a disciplinary and Basically, Scott Moore was in the team at the time, <laughs> and still. Scott Moore, no, Scott Moore, who's probably you know one of the loosest, craziest characters that I've ever played with, and that's saying yeah. something because at St. Helens we were full of nutters. Mm. Um, Scott Moore had hid Louis' pants that had his keys in uh, in the middle of a training session. Kyle Eastman and Royce Simmons, the coach, had the biggest argument ever. Like they were squaring up to each other, the coach and you start one of your star players squaring up, <laughs> squaring up to each other, prodding each other in the chest. Like literally, looked like it was going to evolve into a fight. And anyway, Royce's phone rang mid this argument, and uh, it, Scott Moore had hid Louis's pants, that had his keys in. Louis was trying to go through disciplinary, <laughs> and all of this chaos. So yeah, Royce stopped arguing with Kyle Eastman. He goes, "Hey." Boys, who's hid Louis' pants? <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing there, I've had a shower. I've had a shower, like, and then someone come running in and went, and then Scott Moore's locker. I went, ah, I should have looked there first of all. Yeah. Then everyone come running in and going, you've just missed one of the funniest training sessions yeah, yeah. ever. And I went, ah. Oh. Well, that was the end of Kyle Eastman, actually. That so was it then, yeah. That was it. That, yeah. uh, that story, actually. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he was off to Union. Yeah, he was gone, yeah. Then it was. Wow. Uh, two fingers up to the Saints fans at yeah. Witness. Yeah. Um, and and that argument, and then he was gone. Yeah. Wow! And that was, that, mad. Then. That was yeah. mad because he's probably hugely talented. 
probably one of the best halfbacks I've played with. Ever. Really? Yeah. He wow. was amazing that he year. Was, very was good. it the year that year that year? Before, year, before. That year that, I mean, the start of that year he was class. Yeah. And his union career fizzled <clears> out as well. Because he was such still a young kid. Mm. And for how small he was and how explosive he was, he literally he should was have been smart, an NFL player. smart player as well, wasn't he? How quick he was. Do you ever feel you you've come into this world of rugby league and you're almost an alien within it you've you've like invading it especially i can just picture you sort of in a in a conversation with Abe McManus over contracts and so on it's just you you've come into a world which is so dominated by the north yeah but i, I had i had like people down south like when i was at Harlequins, i had like good good people who come down who wanted to to play so I learnt off them all the swear words and all that. So, <laughs> so, so you, you were integrated as a northerner yeah, in London, really, yeah. weren't you? Yeah, and then we were travelling always away, staying over, having nights out up there. So, it was, yeah, you get integrated. Drip, I was drip-fed. It's quite a unique club as well, isn't it, London? And, and Harlequins, as it was at the time. Because they've got a lot of overseas Aussies and a lot of players that come down from the north who live down there. So they have, like, a real good social, I think. They're really tight, yeah. tight-knit yeah. team off the field. And I always find that the lads who lived down there were always so close to the teammates. Yeah. It was it like literally, it was was amazing. I think that was probably one of the shocks when I moved up. Mm. It was uh, like because people went home and saw their own friends and family, and right because I was still young, I was hanging around with like the youngsters, and everyone shut off after training. Thinking where in London we'd go to the Grotty Calf, have like a, a coffee or something, and then go and then go home and then be around one's ass that night. It was it's, it was weird because it was so tight knit down there and it was fantastic for socials hanging around with each other and all that. We're up here because I because I've come from that. I thought, oh yeah, it'd be sweet up here. We'd be sweet like boom <laughs> up here. And everyone just went home to the mates and I'm sitting there going, oh crap, what are we gonna do? Should I have a Chinese, Jess? Yeah, let's have a Chinese. <laughs> 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 the Chinese every night. The Chinese mate. <laughs> Back to one ten. <laughs> yeah, easy. Well, I mean, when you look at the, the career you've had at Saints and and, and what you've won. And, and you look at the three league leader shields, the two grand final wins last year being the latest one, and you're looking set for another one the way you're going already at the beginning of this season. There were obviously all those losing grand finals as well. When, when you weigh up the trophies do you, and you look back on your career and your testimonial year, do you think, I should have had more, or, or is that more than you've ever dreamt of? Yeah, no, I always think, I always think we should have had more. I think the, the teams we had through my 10 years there and before, they should have had way more, way, way many, way many more. But it's, I'm lucky enough to have two, and I'm happy about that. And probably would like, would like to have like a Challenge Cup, a Challenge Cup as well. But it's hard. I think we've lost in so many semi-finals where we should have won and been on the big stage. But I, I don't like looking, looking back and going, "Oh, we should have done that." Because if if you didn't, you weren't good enough. That's what I always think. If you don't win, you're not good enough. I mean, you um, were there for loads as well. Psychologically, yeah. how damaging were those losing grand finals? I don't know, it's weird that. I don't know. That, um, I think it's damaging to look back on it too much mm. and, and be like really consumed by the fact that you didn't win. Is that like, something you'll do when you're when you're in your forties and fifties? Yeah, yeah, I'd probably find me crying in a pub somewhere. <laughs> oh, we do that a already, really, mate. Really, really bad story about. Like, you know, we should have, we should have, we got by, no. <laughs> or something like that. That's just an impression of what it might look like in mm. four to five years' time. Mm. But I think it's dangerous to reflect too much whilst you're playing. I found my, my and Louis on his testimonial year, I found that a difficult year because it naturally is a year where you reflect a lot on what you've done. Mm. And it feels like a sealed, you know, let's talk about everything I've achieved in my career. But you're in, the, you're middle still of, playing, you're yeah. in the middle of your career, you know. I was nowhere near. You know, Louis. Be it's a great earner, though, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Money-wise, well, you lost you a lot of it. <laughs> HMRC. Uh, <laughs> but quite if you get cash under your under your bed, in a little yeah, shoe no, box, I didn't. It's just a bit like for anybody a... from uh, the revenue. Yeah, I declared all of my events. He did. Um, yeah. Oh my! It was a bit like Sam Burgess <laughs> last week. John Wilkins' net worth decreased quite rapidly in the uh, the years to follow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a seamless transfer of cash. <laughs> uh, ah, a lot of money down the drain. This? Do you want it? Yes, you can have it. Go on, Bye. tell us about a testimonial year. What, what, we, on the outside, have no idea what, what kind of setup it is. What's, how does it work? Well, it's 10 years at a club. Uh, lucky enough, I've done that. Mm. And then it's just, you get a game, which they gave me, they gave me a choice and I chose London just because they were my team. They're, they're the team who started me up, so it was just a tip of a cap to them. And obviously, mm. I know Danny Ward well, who's uh, the head coach, so that was mm. quite easy to arrange. And then you just have events through the year, really. Uh, Do you want to plug any events now? <sighs> When's this going at? 
So essentially, this soon. is <laughs> essentially, <laughs> Louis. This is your, your 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 pension pot, isn't it? The game you get all the takings from yeah. the game and so yeah. on. And yeah, all yeah. Try, the try and pay your mortgage off. Game. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, no, try and pay your mortgage it, off. It is. But look, there's a, there's a, there's a funny thing going on here with <clears> with rugby league is that your testimonial is used as leverage throughout your career. Mm. Believe it or not. <laughs> As like, we will pay you marginally less throughout your career and give you a testimonial. And Louis can't say this because he's in his testimonial year. And so you're minimum wage Louis, this season. You are, <laughs> you, are, you are delighted to be having a testimonial yes. year. Yeah. But I always found your testimonial year is like factored into like your career's worth at a club. Yeah. And so they're in your contract, these testimonial years? No, it's well, not. It's just, give it, you don't no, yeah, they the do, RFL. but it's not. You can't have it pre-agreed. You have you to have 10 years of service. It can't be four years. So, for example, I was six years into a, 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 con, a time at St. Helens, and mm. then they offer you a four-year deal that is probably not what you're expecting, but... It's got the testimonial. You might have a testimony. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah. those kinds of conversations where, look, it it's a huge achievement to do anything like what Louis done for that period of time. Yeah. But the perception of that sort of a loyalty that's being repaid is quite an archaic one, you know. Mm. It's actually, I don't know if it's... So you're saying there's no loyalty? Or no, not I as think, much as perceived? Well, I just think you, you do your job well and you're competent at it and you get paid the right amount. And if you hang around long enough, you probably get paid just slightly less because there is this potential of a testimony at the end of it. Yeah. Mm. Do you know, that's just yeah. being honest. It's not like... It's not like being deceit. I'm not like trying to like play it down. What I'm saying is that is kind of for people who don't understand. That's the sort of conversations that go on in the background. Yeah, it's a bit in more sinister than in the shadow. It looks like. The and have, you got, have you got any advice for Louis in his testimonial year? What what to do and what not to do? Um, What's yeah? Uh, think, think I just thought think big. Think big. Like do big things. Inspirational. Big things. No, rather than what 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 when I was at St Helens. Um, what the, the temptation was, was to just recreate Phoenix Nights repetitively <laughs> over the course of a year. Mm. So how many times can we host a comedy and curry night? Let's see. It was like a competition. Let's see how many buffets. You know, if I saw another half a potato with, you know, cheese and a bit of pineapple sticking out of it on the cocktail sticks, let's create Phoenix Nights. 40 times this year, John. Well, you and see you that? I all, like that. That's he's all... <laughs> <laughs> I like the cheese and the pineapple. <laughs> and a bit of potato. And he was looking at me and I went, oh, come on here, come on. That's <laughs> what I have right there, I went like, in my head. No. Oh. Does, it, does it feel like a swan song then? Because John said, it's bizarre because like, you're, you're probably feeling as fit and as strong as you were three years ago, four years ago. You, you're a great team, new coaches come in and that transition, we'll talk about Christian Wolf later, but it seems absolutely seamless, will be a completely different coach to style wise to, to Justin Holbrook does it feel like you're sick of talking about oh look it's coming to an end who knows you might have another year contract how old are you 33 that's a lie yeah. that sounded like a lie didn't it I should have said 20 <laughs> you, yeah. you told me 34 <laughs> 34 you told me 34 <laughs> yeah. 34 I have this argument with Jess all the time you right. told me 34 yeah. on Friday 34 34 am I yeah. 34. well you said 34 <laughs> 34 worrying, it? doesn't know how old he is 28 yeah, a lot of concussions does yeah. Amy McManus, McManus know how old he is 28 28 McManus so um, go on because you've spent a year now and you're going to be asked all these things but does that emotional side kick in? You have to completely separate that it's your testimonial. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I'm, I, I'm quite easy. I can do that. I can just go, there you go. Let the committee look after it. Yeah. I'm fine. Well, the thing I found weird was talking about myself to me to me brochure. Yeah. When they were asking me questions, like, I didn't, I'm not one of them who, cause I, first of all, I can't remember everything. Mm. So I'm not that. And then I, and then I look and go, who would remember? So then I end up texting people going, what did we do on that? Like, How old go, am I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always ask missus. <laughs> <laughs> 34, 34. Right. Uh, but no, like it's, it, I found that hard trying to do that and and like just trying to reminisce and that like, it and then it went oh went oh can't really remember like stuff <laughs> like, like funny stuff. Everyone's asked do funny stuff, do funny stuff. Yeah. I'm like I'll do funny stuff when I'm ready, don't I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I find it weird. Like I I found when I was having my year that. Paul Wellens was a big help for me because mm. he remembers like details. You know what happened in the eighth yeah. minute yeah. of the 2012 Grand Final. Yeah. Like he just had this weird detail of like Lee Smith kicked a 40-20 in the Grand Final and this happened. Then yeah. then we knocked on down a short side and then he's like we packed the scrum uh, and all this. I'm like how is that? You rewatch his matches like regularly. Yes, from, people, people from his glory like, days. He's, photographic he's memories. Isn't he people have he that. wrote something yeah. in my thing. And it said in the game where I went to him, oh, we've won this. 
and I vaguely remember saying it when I read it. Yeah. Mm. And then I remember, I remember me saying it because I went to him, well, we've won this, so I'm like that. And he went, he went, there was like three minutes left. He went, don't say that. So, and then after the game, I went, told you we win this. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> but he, yeah, he remembers but all this. Well, well, Sky Plus Planet is if you go, you know, people how they save things, <laughs> like tragically save things. Wellow's still got 2006 season game, St. St. Helens Leeds at Nosley Road. His best game. He's still got that on there. Oh my the way. summer fixture, like Wellow scores a couple of tries, early doors. And I went, I, I, like, this is probably like two years ago, I went round for a brew and Wellow's like, you want to watch this? Get this on. <laughs> Get this, like I wasn't there. I was like playing and he chucks it on and he's like, look at this. Look, look, look how we move the ball around here. Full 80 like minutes. <laughs> look, can we just open your beers? Come on. <laughs> Um, what I was going to ask you as well about the Saints teams that you've played in because you've played in some all of you played in some brilliant Saints sides do you think that the one that you've just won the grand final with and going into this season is, is the best of the bunch in the near 10 years you've been there yeah because it was I think what we did that year I think was well it was record breaking but it was it was an amazing I think we had a, we had a, a lot of blokes pushing in the right direction and I thought we told a couple of home truths and like what we needed to get out of it and what we wanted to be seen as. And I think we all bought into it. And every time we went to the pitch, it was, that's that's how we are. This is us now, this is us. So it was, I think we've built, we've built like a, not like a legacy, but we've built, put our foundations down really to, to go again, mm. like to build, Another Saint, another great Saints team I'm, for the future. I'm asking this, but I know the answer is: <laughs> How important was Justin to that mm. change? Because when the period before Justin came in was a tough period, we yeah. were both there. It was yeah. a tough period. <clears throat> but f in your eyes, what did Justin Holbrook bring bring to Saints? I think that that period before, I think we were all trying our hardest, but it just wasn't working for some for some terrible reason. I think we were trying too hard. And then when Justin come in, I think it, it sounds it sounds like everyone says it, but he just made rugby simple. Yeah, and it is, simple time, yeah. it is a simple game. It is a simple game. And he just said, listen, this is how we're going to play. And he made it He made it for the first week. I thought he was one of the best coaches ever because mm. we were finished by half 11. <laughs> but he fooled me. He did fool me because mm. then we started finishing at three o'clock. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is this. He's pulled the wool over my eyes. But he just made it simple and fun. And he wasn't, he wasn't, I wouldn't say he was much of a shatter. He did lose his rag from time to time, but mm. he was very precise on what he wanted to do. And the way he put it across, it made, I thought it made me feel calm that I knew that everyone knew what they was doing. Mm. Had a very thin head though, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> thinner, thinner than Kevin Brown's. Yeah, yeah I mean, Thumbling. Kevin Brown's got a very, I don't think Kevin Brown's head's thin. I just think his neck's very long. Mm. He's got that accentuates yeah, he's got a neck, yeah. same mm. width all the way up. Yeah, mm. yeah. but every earthworm Jim esque. Great block. <laughs> anyway, if he's watching, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> yeah. when, when he came from the NRL, like, I've spoken to him about it as well. It doesn't offend him by saying he, he wasn't a, a big name coming <coughs> over from the NRL here. Did you even envisage that you could have the success that you've had under him and, and, and the way it ended with him going back to? Back yeah, to well, yeah. I think I think all the boys were gutted when he, when, like he said, he was obviously going to go because mm. he had such a successful season. So. But uh, yeah, no. Tell the truth, I didn't have a. I don't really know much over the NRL. Mm -hmm. But when he came over, I was like, oh yeah, sweet. Just like when when uh, Benny Bob was standing in the showers, <laughs> I was like, who's that fella after <laughs> after Newcastle? That was really I was weird. Like, it looked like Domino's. Who's ordered pizzas? The Domino's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like what's, what's going pizzas. on here? <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> no, <laughs> pizzas came into the dressing room. Yeah, but ben, and yeah. Saints announced at the Magic Weekend we'd signed Ben Barber. <laughs> yeah. But for the lads who didn't know Ben Barber, Ben Barber just came in at a similar <laughs> time to the pizzas. Stood next to the pizzas. Yeah, was the Domino's <laughs> driver. Have you got any margaritas, mate? Who's it for that? Someone tip him. Someone tip him. Why is he in our showers? Yeah, there you go, man. Why was he in the showers? <laughs> looking back, <laughs> looking back, someone needs to ask why Ben went to the shower. The first thing he did was get yeah. in the shower. And then, he, and then his head came under the toilet cubicle. He was like, hey, John, you all right? <laughs> hey, bro. I was going off. Yeah, sweet. Who, who like? Yeah. But no, and then, yeah, and then it all just, then then I knew who he was. And then, <laughs> and then, I, was, then I saw him play and I went, huh? Well, he's pretty good. But yeah. essentially what he's Justin not a pizza guy no more. <laughs> no, he's what, not. What Justin he's has, not. has left is uh, obviously a legacy. And I know you guys would... Delighted that he could go out with that that yeah. bang before he went back to Australia because it was already agreed and everyone knew he was going. 
But the new man's coming in again. Probably someone that you've never heard of again. Christian Wolf comes in, Tonga coach. Um, and and how different is he in, in your early experiences of him this season to Justin? I think well, I think he's coming. I did well. I knew of him because oh, obviously, oh, yeah, because <laughs> when uh, we had well for Ireland, we had like a training session against Tonga, so okay. I just knew. Uh, that guy yeah, he was it. that guy. He was shouting at all the Tongans. So <laughs> I knew, I knew it was that one. I didn't, couldn't put a, n- a name to the shouting face. He was shouting at all the Tongans when we were just the like, brave, brave we mum. were going through him like, as Ireland, and he he told him off, and then they then they started <laughs> hurting us. So then we went, oh, pack up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I didn't. But he's he's coming, and he's he's laid out his stall, what he wants to improve on, what he thinks, what he's seen us that we need to improve on, and. Do you need to improve? Uh, I mean, you, you always have to, but uh, what is there to improve on? I, no, I think I think as if you want to keep yourself yeah. on the top of the pecking order, you've always got to improve. I think I think as yeah, a team. Yeah, one of one of Saints' biggest failings in the past was sitting back and just really not challenging. You know, when you're the best or you feel like you're the best team, is I, I think what became part part of the Saints' DNA throughout maybe the sort of 2008, 9, 10 sort of era was, look, we're the best team, mm. you know, and, and it was more this, like, sit back and be comfortable and just enjoy it. And I'll quote one of my former teammates, Nick Fozard, who came into the change room and everybody, everybody was stressed we got beaten off somebody. And Daniel Anderson, the coach at the time, was trying to make us play a different way and he was like, in the middle of this team crisis meeting, mm. although we had the best team, we weren't playing very well, and Daniel Anderson's hosting this meeting and he st- Nick Fozard stopped the meeting and went, boys, boys, relax. We're the champions. <laughs> Let them catch us. <laughs> Very Patrick. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was. And they caught us. Oh, they caught us. <laughs> they caught us. Leeds caught us big time for six years straight. So, so <laughs> <laughs> And that's so, fine. All, so it's all Nick Fozard's fault. <laughs> it is all Nick Fozard's fault. A lot of things in Nick So Fozard's go on, give fault. us a bit of insight into, into Christian and his mentality. How different to Justin? I think, oh, well, I think, I think, they are the same because all head coaches are the same. They're all mental, so they're all <laughs> like they're all in that bracket of mentalness. Justin uh, seemed to me on the outside like the calmest man in no, the world. No, they're all mental. No, Don't just worry about Justin that, yeah. was they're all stress. All yeah, you can, yeah, people can cover it like yeah. that. Like I'm a stress head. You wouldn't believe that. I'm funny as anything as well. So, but no, that's like he's he's totally different, but they're the same. If you know what I mean, he's coming. Yeah. He doesn't want to change stuff. He just wants us to make us. More, more, more of a, a tight, tight knit group like we were, and just, just, just play the game how he wants to play. Because he's had things that he's he's seen in videos where he wants us to work on, and I think all the boys are buying into it, into like field sessions, wrestle sessions, weight sessions. Mm. He just wants more intensity, and I think, I think the boys are giving it at the moment because we we've been playing well and we're we're, we're looking alright. And there's a better thing I think in in team sports like. You have to keep evolving what you do, and there's a natural cycle to it. Either, either, for example, I'd say like maybe Man United, when they had Alex Ferguson for such a long time, he rejuvenated things by changing his coaches, by you know, you know, redefining what he thought was important by changing his playing staff. But in rugby league, we don't have this sort of management structure where you've got a manager and coaches. Mm. So very much the head coach is the be all and end all, really. So there's a cycle of two or three, maybe four years, and then either the coach has to sort of probably change or reinvent himself, or that's a natural point at which the club needs something else. I think Justin leaving was, for me, a big challenge for Saints, but also a blessing as well, because Justin's gone on and will do great things in the NRL, but Christian Wolf's come in and ju- it will naturally just re-energize critique it a little bit yeah and, and come in with a cri- you're right that's exactly what it Thanks. is a yeah. critical eye well I think when you get a new coach they want to put their stamp on it don't they mm. they yeah. don't want to do everything that was was done in the past because it wouldn't feel like their own so the fact that Saints have got the same playing squad it's a great playing squad and they've got probably loads of young kids coming through um, so the fact that he's got a little bit to work on but I think it is that critique and just kind of roughing out the edges a little bit and and, and fine tuning things. Just like what he says as well. I think when he when he did come in, it put more people on their toes again. Yeah. yeah. So you're not getting comfortable. You're like going, oh, we know what we're going to do. Justin's here. Yeah. We know how our sessions are going to go because yeah. for the first month we had no idea what was going on. We were running everywhere, like literally running everywhere and doing everything at, at speed. And he's just put boys back on their toes where 
if you feel like you're comfortable, he's not, he, and, and he's not afraid to throw people in. Yep. So as well, so but I guess the danger is he's left at the the absolute peak, and it looked like it. Well, it wasn't the peak because it was getting higher and higher, and he could have had another couple of seasons with you at that level, couldn't he, Justin? Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think he could have. I think if he kept it going, it would have been difficult. I think this season to try and recreate it and all that because you'd have to come in and try and change things. Like Wilco says, you just mm. wanna you wanna be rewarded and get told that you're good and everything like that, but you also want to be go go do this now nah, go do this do be be better be better mm. and I think he's yeah. left and gone over there and he will do wicked stuff and, over and in NRL. NRL jobs don't come up very often and yeah. for an Australian player or coach that is the pinnacle of the game so when Gold Coast Titans who struggled for a few years approached him it was a no-brainer for yeah. for Justin going and over there there's like a balance in the sport as well is like comfort and consequences so when you're really comfortable I think it's it's bad for performance and when there's too many consequences it's bad for performance so you've got to tread this line and you see it in football don't you football's hilarious for me as an outsider looking in is the team's going really badly bring Sam Allardyce in <laughs> do you know what I mean oh, oh, do you know what? he'll get a reaction from a pl group of players that are yeah. underperforming whereas you know the, the really great coaches balance people feeling comfortable and being excited but then also making people understand there's consequences for not doing your job well. And that that in that scene there is great coaching, is world-class coaching where people know that they're comfortable and feel comfortable, but they're aware that they have to make sacrifices because if they don't, there's consequences. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the key. And, and I think the tendency when anything is really extended in time, unless you're a genius sort of coach is that people become comfortable and then that's where a change happens and in football don't we see it all the time mm, well, is also now than the, we did 20 the, years ago the yeah. perception is god the team's not doing so well we'll bring somebody in because there's then there'll be consequences yeah. a new guy will come in and drop two players and they're, they're, the consequences yeah. are there but i guess Whereas, the financial pressures have increased that intensity yeah like, for sure but, but, but what we're talking about is maybe saints would love to have kept justin holbrook mm. but bringing in Wolf is actually a chance to reinvigorate, which is already, I'm telling you now, 10%, 15% better than any other team in Super League. Have you sensed that? Not that it went stale at all under to, under Justin, but have you sensed that in the past with coaches that when the players aren't fully on board with what they used to be with that coach, that it becomes contagious and almost poisonous within a squad? <laughs> yeah, I think you, you, you can get that. You can get the old... Complacency, where yeah. you're just like, yeah, well, Robes will score a try, we'll be sweet. Like, it's someone, the someone, takes the flag some, at the end of the someone day. to get us out of this trouble. I mm. think it, I, I'd, I'd be lying to you if I've never, never like, like felt that in like a group or something. But like I said earlier on the show, we're, we're all winners, so we all want to we'll, we'll win, but it's sometimes we go about it the wrong way where we try too hard mm. or thingy. But like he said, there's always a consequence where. You could end up being crap or mm. world class. Mm. So someone else who's followed their NRL dream, uh, the big news coming out of yeah. St Helens this week, Luke Thompson off to yeah. join the Canterbury Bulldogs. Um, I mean, you, you must have known about that for a while, but if, you know, officially announced. <coughs> and you've had a chat with him, haven't you? You said you could stay at St Helens and be a legend or test yourself amongst the, the best in the world. So yeah. it's Louis' fault he's left. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> no, just, yeah. just, just him and if you watch Saints fans, yeah. Louis basically he's the rat in the camp. <laughs> <laughs> he's telling like he was tell he, Louis said to me this three or four years ago, get out of here, there's more cash. Told, he got he sent Jammer get, then. Get, get well, on that you want to get to Canada. Well, yeah. Get to Toronto. He said there's yeah. loads of cash. Whoa, yeah. loads of pie mash out there. I was like, Whoa, Louis, steady. I want my testimonial year. I'm fine. I've been paid less than I should have done for ten years, but I want to Celebrate with the lads. <laughs> Good agents' know. fees out there, though. Yeah. Agents fees. I mean, he's, he's an incredible talent, isn't he? For, he's phenomenal. He's been phenomenal the past, past three years. I think for us, he's been fantastic. I think with Tomo, like he said earlier on the show, when you have uh, speed, leg mm. speed, you're big and strong, and you're built like Tomo, mm. then you're going to go well in anything. Well, he's not that big, though, is he? For a front rower, but he's that speed. I think and the he's strength. the nuggetiness, isn't yeah. he? He's not, he's not tall. Is, I wouldn't say he's tall, but he's he, nuggetiness. I'd say he's the, he's <laughs> the nuggety, modern nuggetiness. nuggetiness. That's a word. That's a word. <laughs> he's just a giant neck, isn't he, as well? He's a giant ball of muscle that's ready to pack. <laughs> ah, but like he, a tiger. Tom was a prime example of right getting the best out of a player. So Luke Thompson came onto the scene at Saints. Mm. Um, you know, he, he was, you know, he did great things initially. 
And then in sort of a complex environment of where, you know, getting to a certain part of the field and doing this and being on this and, you he know, being easily confused. Option, like, like Tomo is a blunt tool. He's, he's like a really small albino sledgehammer. That's what you've got to look at him like. And and when you say to Tomo, just what does he say? Just just grab egg. Cat I'm just gonna cart egg in, dead herd. Cart it in, dead herd. <laughs> cart, cart it in, dead herd. And once he starts doing that, he just picks up the ball and runs hard and just stuff stuff happens. Mm. That's like kind of the game plan at but, but I mean that's that's belittling the talent that he's got, isn't it? I mean in terms of no, like, no, his talent is not no, his but rugby. I'm, his talent's not rugby. No. His talent is physical preparation. Rugby is a consequence of his physical preparation. A bit like Louis. Tomo, uh, yeah, well, no, yeah. In, in as much as Louis's like athletic. Pack of biscuits every but, night. But Tomo's reaped the rewards of being mobile and really, cha- uh, you know, there's kind of players that come along and he kind of probably changed how that position is, is played, yeah. you know, in what he's done. And that's why he's going to Canterbury. So being a, a St. Helens home bird, can you see him being a success in Australia? Or does he need the, the, those home comforts around him? No, I think he can. I think he could be a ex- uh, success out there. I think, like he said, like, look, like he's, he's quick, he's strong. Mm. He's, he's got nearly half of what rugby league is over there. So he's, he's, he's going to go he's well fit over as there. Well. He, plays fit, he, goes, he goes a long time. And I think what you don't see is that he prepares for the game, for a season, for everything tremendously. Yeah. He's like pinpoint, he'll eat meals hydrate, he does everything and he's, he's bob on with that and I think over there it'll only kick him on to go over there and I know, I know obviously like Saints done everything to keep him yeah. they wanted to keep him because he's a phenomenal talent but right. at the, the end of the day when someone knocks you and throws yeah. money, money at you, well, it's a dream isn't it? Exactly yeah well yeah. You it's, not prefer- dream, prefer- it's not a dream if well, you talk. Saints sorry mate <laughs> it's not a dream sorry I was, I was, you we'll might talk about home. the Lakers come on what's happened been, what's been happening at the Sad Lakers I don't know talk about that. No, let's not talk about the Lakers no when you know it's an opportunity I get it and 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 like it's exciting to go and test yourself, but he would never go and test himself if there was the commercial means in Super League to stay to keep him. He'd stay. No, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no, yeah. If, if he'd stay, he'd oh, stay yeah, if we had the same could. money as over there, I think yeah, well, more and more boys would stay. I well, think. Mark, you've been there, done it, played in the NRL. Mm. Have you? So don't like to talk about it. <laughs> yes. So so go on because there's been. I mean, obviously, you know, Bateman an exception, but there's been a lot of names, haven't there, in the last ten years who've mm. gone over the best of the best from Super League and have come back a year later, Except two me. years later. Yeah, I think I think he'll go really well over there, because apart from all these physical attributes, he's a big game player as well. He was that performance in the grand final last I'm year against us was yeah. one of the best yeah. front rows performances I've ever seen. I think in the uh, he's only played for his country a few times, and all, every time he does, he's been unbelievable. And I think he's got that mentality that you need in the NRL because it's ruthless in terms of the way they play. It's it's a it's an arm wrestle every single week, and I think. He's, he's got the, the mentality to, to stick it out for a full game and to do all the right things continuously. And I, I just I can see him just going on to another level. But this, this is the wrong... Right. There is no question he's going to do well in the NRL. You think, yeah? There's no question. Yeah. Because like he, he's up there with one of the... He's one of the best front rows in the world anyway. He proved yeah. it in England. And, and, anyway. And, 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 so yeah. there's, there's this question of where, how will he go in yeah. the NRL is not... How will George Williams go? George Williams will be exceptional in the NRL. Mm-hmm. How will all of these young British players go in the NRL? Well, the reason they're being recruited is because the, the recruitment process over there identifies them as being able to do really well. Mm-hmm. The, the, the challenge is, and the, what we've got to talk about, is it is devastating and sad for me that we're not going to see Luke Thompson playing in Super League next year. Mm. It, it, it's it's but inevitable. awful. But inevitable at the same time. It, yeah, but what that's like? What? How about that doom? The inevitable sort of fear that what we have no chance at retaining our best young talent. Mm. And I'm with you on that. I am with you on that because if we keep losing our young talent, and I know, I know. Well, I only know from Saints that they did try their best to keep him. But if we keep losing our talent to over there, then over here becomes just a, a feeding a, ground. a feeding ground. For but that's Australia. the landscape of the sport in this country. Is that our salary cap, I know we've got the marquee player allowance and all that sort of stuff, but it's a quarter or a third of what it is over there. So they can pay the players more money. So as a consequence, they're going to poach our best players. So drop the cap, get rid of it. The yeah, salary fine. cap's failed. It's a failed concept. Okay, I'm, I'm really tired of talking about this. What, give, what evidence is that the salary cap's worked? 
Can you, right, Will, as an outsider from a sport, why would you put a salary cap on a sport? Well, we've been over this, haven't we, before? But, um, to stop clubs failing. Yeah. It's keeping even. That'd even be the only one. Yeah. Field, but, yeah. but the distribution of talent's not even in the UK. No. Nope. Because Saints and Wigan and Leeds and Warrington, probably mm. they still cherry pick the best young players. Why would you leave St. Helens? Well, be, Wakefield aren't going to offer you 300 grand a year, so you stay at St. Helens anyway because you're winning. So the cap stops you from actually your earning potential of being great. Has it stopped clubs going bust? No, Bradford is struggling. Salford, you know, there's rumours about of, Salford. Yeah. Huddersfield, there's rumours about Huddersfield. Look, Toronto's bankrolled by an individual. Mm. So the, the evidence of the cap working, if I think If anything, smaller clubs end up pay, paying players more money because they have to entice them to leave a big club by paying them more money. So as a consequence, a lot of the small, perceived smaller clubs yeah. end up pushing the boundaries of the salary cap because that's the only way to recruit. Yeah. I just think what's the... I, I'd like to see it just because I think we need to be desperate to preserve the talent pool in this competition. Yeah, and, for and the future uh, of the sport. For sure. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 look, I, I just think that's got to be of paramount. Keep the money in the sport on the field. And it, and look, I'll it's not a self I'm not saying it because I want to earn more money. I, I actually You're doing all right, Tom, so no, no, I'm not. It's oh. not it's just, it's, the income is that tax off, is that off mic? Huge. You said that. Yeah. Sorry. And now you haven't got your extra five percent for your little living costs. No. What are your living costs? Why do you need that extra 5%? It's just a slush fund, really, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Just put it, you know, keep so it. so expensive nice. to live in Rochdale, isn't it? Have you got a new car? What? Have you got a new car? Have you got a new car? No, I asked you first. Oh, yeah, I've lost both my cars. I got my house robbed. Pathetic. Has anyone seen the Jaguar? Oh, I did see that. <laughs> and a grand final grand ring from 2014. <laughs> oh, Can I have it back, please? You just, um, yeah, I got yeah, burgled. Tuning in. Crime stoppers, crime stoppers. Call this number at the bottom of the screen. It's on a matter pay, isn't it? Who, ha where is that ring now? Do you, I, I've oh, got, right. a, I've got a. a Can theory. we do a plea to the? This I looks so very much like a crime stoppers set. Well, it does. Have a look. I have a I'm feeling that, that your 2014 grand final <laughs> ring is on the teeth of Mahe Fenua. Because you interviewed him today, and he's got two gold teeth. And he's melted down a ring, he told me, to put them on his teeth. Right. From his father, you said. Two he's melted down ring. a ring. He said it was a wedding ring, but he didn't look too confident. One of his teeth, you could just see a fall. And also, do you know what he's got on his teeth? And he's taking the piss out of you. MF. Because he's got the initials MF in gold. <laughs> he's got on his got, teeth. He's got Simply the same initials because his name is Mahe Fanua. Have you got it? a new car? Have you got a Defender? For like wading through the countryside. So with you're, your dogs. you're waiting for our personal relationship to ask me this question <laughs> on I a podcast. I saw it. Do you today. Want to have this conversation? Maybe we should have that conversation after about the Yeah, I've, had a, I've got a defender. Yeah. It's totally to Top Gear now. <laughs> for wading. How is it? How is <laughs> it right? motor, 2.4 diesel. I've had, How's it the suspension? I've had it remapped. So you get an extra uh, 60 newton meters of torque in gears one and two. Um, let's talk about the season. Yeah, that's better. To finish off. Because, um, I mean, firstly, John, is everything all right with you? You you look like yeah. you have been... Dishevelled. You look dishevelled. Yeah, we had a yeah. couple of Guinness before the show. No, no, I mean, in general, what? like, you know, huh? the, the, to begin the season. Huh? I mean, he looks I mean, he looks like he's sort of... The thing, is, the thing I want to say is I can't say it because I'm going to get you, like myself in trouble. pulled him out of a skip. And you in trouble, but <laughs> is everything okay? Everything's great, Well, Yeah. Everything's great. You just keep, you Focus know, pre myself. preening yourself. <laughs> Yeah, you, tinted moisturiser and the well, Botox. No one's interested in that. This well, season, no, we are interested. No, we're well. interested we are interested. We're interested in that. Well, how much faith have you got this on season, today? Lots. <laughs> when was the last time you got makeup on? Makeup on. <laughs> I was going to say, what is your daily routine? You know, <laughs> <laughs> wipe my hands good, good. Look how many creases are on his forehead. Yeah. Yeah. Zero. Anyway, um, go like that. Do you get a Turkish barber? Do you get a Turkish barber to shave your beard? This this season recruitment. Where's your socks? Some unbelievable <laughs> players have come into this league. Sonny sorry, Ball Williams, sorry. whose head is... Who, who's a heads up? Who's ass? John's, John's up heads Sonny's up, Sonny Ball Williams' yeah. is ass. It's not the other way around. No, it's not the same. Yeah. He, he wishes. Stand up 69 is, 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 is this the most exciting season going into it, to a season that, that you've had in the last nine, ten years with the players that have come in? The players that have come in, yeah. Bloody hell, yeah. Well, obviously, you've got Sonny Caesar, Bill Williams. Uh, uh, Huddersfield, Maloney. At exactly, Catalan. yeah. I think you've got, you got stars that are coming over. And name some others, Louis. Hey, name some others. Uh, <laughs> Maloney, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sonny B. Williams, Flash, Caesar, Caesar, Caesar. 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 No, but we talk about players going out, don't we? And the drain of going to NRL. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Still that is true. Big no, names, you're right. You? You're right. Well, actually, it's probably been the most exciting year. Mm. So I think the comments about Luke and that deserve some context. Is this has been a great year for retaining mm. talent? For I mean, getting new talent in, mm. hasn't it? But then we have to keep focused. 
the other side of it is losing good young players mm-hmm. uh, is a big threat to the sport. But but some players like Maloney, even Gareth Widder, Caesar, I mean, yeah, Widder, Sonny Bill, you know, f- the big names like box office. We had a page, full page in the Times mm. this yeah. week, rugby league. That, well, yeah, it, it like, was on, whoa, it was on just, Sky Sports News, and it was like Sonny Bill Williams is signed for. I was like, 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 like you never ever see it. Yeah. On the yellow bar. No, you wait for Any the, t- the league, ticket yeah. goes wait past. The t- and then it always goes to the ad. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, oh, you miss yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But it was on the yellow bar and I was like, oh, well, yeah. rugby league's made it now. What's Easy. he like? Great, lovely, really nice guy. Um, he's, he's tall, athletic, good yeah. looking. He looks humongous. Looks anything looks anything looks insightful great. that people great in his about. pants. Likes to read. Um, What's he reading? Potter? He's reading a book about Harry samurai. Potter. About the samurai, the way of the samurai. Called Mashashi. I've got a samurai. So it's about how to live your life, but mm. it uses life lessons as a samurai. Quite insightful. He's an insightful guy, yeah. Mm. Good He's on got him. a horrendous beard. Yeah. Uh, very patchy. Uh, you had a bad he, beard for a while, didn't you? Rochdale. Yeah, he's fine. He's from he's from New Zealand. Like, there's nothing happening in New Zealand. <laughs> mm. Like, you could move anywhere and be delighted. To, like, New Zealand's beautiful, isn't it? But it's yeah. just like basically. But he's lived in the south of France and Sydney and Japan as well. Yeah, yeah. But he said, "Quote for like this is him." Rochdale's his favourite place he's been in the world. Fact, there you go. What? 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 Exactly. We've well, got new training facilities these days, haven't you? Old Manchester City's. Yeah, yeah. No, he likes Rochdale. Training ground. He loves Rochdale. Mm. It's a nice little gift, isn't it? City yeah. just letting you squeeze in there with Aguero and David Silva. Yeah, I actually drove in when uh, Pep Guardiola was... Pwep. R- Pwep. 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 What did that Pwep, Pwep. come out? Yeah, he said Pwep. Yeah. Pwep. Pwep. Yeah. Pep Pwep. Guardiola. Have a little wave. No, drives a really turd car. Is Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and a little grenade to throw in in terms of recruitment. There's no doubt about his talent on the pitch, but um, it's caused a bit of a shitstorm, isn't it? Israel Folau. Thoughts, Louis? We'll go oh, to you on this well, one. Don't come to me. Don't come to me. I'm just <laughs> going to skim on this. Well, yeah. So, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, an incredible, incredible. <laughs> what did yeah, you so, just yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. So, did yeah. Louis just went, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was his answer. That's me in my head going, <laughs> He's come, don't say anything. Louis, first question, do you know who he is? Do you know who he is? So, yeah, From no. From yeah. Union, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The Union winger, isn't it? Yeah. But, John, to you. Yes, what, what thank you so no. much. Thank you so much. You got away with that one. What do you mean? I mean, what do you want me to say? I mean, look, I'd well, like I, you to repeat what you said on LBC last week from the call-in show. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, what I said was basically, um, look, his views are traditionally Christian beliefs, aren't they? They're like an extreme of Christian They're values, right. aren't they? The, the the if you went went to the nth degree of analysing like Christian mm-hmm. beliefs, those beliefs that everyone lives in sin, and he listed you know, numerous sins of which everyone who would listen to those sins has probably committed two or three of them or maybe four or five or whatever. Mm. Um, My issue was with the homosexuality thing is because all of the other sins are perceived as choice. And what he was saying, I think, was lazily assuming that homosexuality is a choice where I'm, I'm sure like in the modern world, that's not how it's perceived, you know what I'm well, saying? It's not what it is, it's, it's the only perceived, No, it's it? the only thing on the list that's not a choice. Mm. You know, if, if that's, you know, how you're you know how you're inclined and how you're attracted to people, mm. I don't think Israel Flau should use his, his profile, which is through rugby, mm. to then push on these beliefs to other people who might not necessarily be aligned with the way he thinks. Well, and there's all sorts of dangers with this as well. I mean, you've got, so Israel Folau... Again, we, we know we know all about his talent, but this is a guy who said that hell awaits gay people. He said that the bushfires in no, Australia he, are punishment from God. No, but he said hell awaits everyone. That I mean, look. I well, will, he said hell awaits gay people. Yeah, but he did say hell awaits everyone. Like, who chooses to, to be gay? Atheists. But, it, but there was a previous list as well that, yeah. that was more specific. Well, that's why he's in yeah. homosexuals. But, but this is the thing: is that is commonly held in that that that's a Christian belief, isn't it? And like, it's I'll not a Christian belief. It's, a, it's no, an no, extreme, extreme. I'll, say, I'll extreme. say from the outset, I completely disagree with the guy. Yeah. And actually just think it was just a bizarre and ill-informed use of his public profile to promote his own beliefs. So how does anyone win with him coming to Super League? Because if we, if we pretend to be an inclusive sport, how can we not be inclusive of him? Because yes. his views are no. absolutely abhorrent. No, that, his that, views that, that's are... That's why the Super League is, and the Rugby League have got their hands tied because they can't ban him from the sport because 
they'll believe themselves legally uh, legally yeah. open to so be sued by him for being discriminatory based on his religious exactly, views. Because he's However, there was an understanding from the all Super League clubs, and probably all rugby clubs around the world, that he brought the sp- either code and sport in general into disrepute by these horrible remarks and horrible statements and views on homosexuality above most other things and that you can't go around saying that these kind of things because mm. there's there's people who there's there's probably men and women in this country who might be in the closet out of the closet whatever who, who struggle with the idea that what about if you just got a closet you might just have a closet yeah but it's a sensitive issue regarding your sexuality and and various issues that come with it so to publicly blast these people and say that they're going to hell as a consequence of the way they're born is just, just, just wrong. There's, there's two no things. other what, way of putting more it. Than two what, things, no, but, it? but when, when you start playing a career in sport, you, you enter into an autocratic situation. Is in your employment is autocratic. You get told when to be somewhere, you get told what to wear, you get told how to behave, and that that is autocratic. Mm. So when you sign up to getting paid X amount of pounds, I know I need to be at training at nine, I need to wear this training kit. I need to listen to my coach. I need to be respectful. I need to not say anything that really puts the club at risk of being in wrong. And and he knew that. Like you, everybody knows that, doesn't he? Like he knew that when he was playing for the Wallabies, he knew that. Mm. So he made a decision after a warning to go against that. And and that's the power of his belief. Yeah, but his and, belief and his, are unapologetic. So this is what my, my because question that's, of who can win. He he's he's unrepentant because he. Right. He's What's the counter argument? The, count- the counter argument to, not argument, but the counter to Israel Folau is, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. I don't particularly care about whether you think I'm a sinner or not. I, I don't believe in God. Yeah. So for me to be offended about Israel Folau saying I'm going to hell because no, what I, I boo not, not everybody no, has no, your views. Though, no, no, but a lot of people might saying, be struggling with. Yeah, because the, some L- of the LGBTQ. Well, take God it, out of it. God's irrelevant in this situation. No, but, but because no, it's, it is relevant because what what Israel Folau is saying, you will be judged in the eyes of his God that he believes in, which is fine if he believes in that God. If you don't believe in that God, why is it? Why would it be an issue for you? I get what you're saying. No, no, but I'm not. It's yeah, not. I'm, I'm not yeah, going I, to hell, I, I, Flash. I, I, yeah, I know I'm an atheist. Because, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hell because in my said, mind, I, hell I does not you. exist. Yeah, I, I, I will. But it's still no, spreading hate. But on the, it on is. The other no, foot. but you're missing my point. I'm I not, completely disagree. I just said agree with you. I completely disagree with what I said. In a, in, on all aspects. What it does, what it does is it stops people like, for example, Gareth Thomas and Keegan Hurst, two people. And Thomas came out when he was playing union, not even league. We've got one openly British rugby league gay player. Yeah. In Keegan Hurst, he's at Halifax. And it stops a whole generation of people who right. think that they've listen, got the platform to come out and listen and to Keegan Hurst on Five Live Sport because he did an unbelievable interview mm-hmm. for BBC Five Live. And if anybody should have an opinion on this, Keegan Hurst, your man. Yeah. And I've never heard a more articulate guy who is more. He would completely it, disagree what you're saying. No, he wouldn't. He disagree. I disagree with Israel Folau what he said, which is what but Keegan Hurst said. He was playing Ke- devil's advocate then. No, what I'm yeah exactly yeah. what I'm doing. Were. Yeah, uh, what I'm doing is. I'm trying to portray why you wouldn't be offended by what he said. Okay, so so let me give you this scenario. So Keegan Hurst said he spoke to Steve McNamara, called him up, and he said, look, out of respect, I want to just run this by you. And Keegan said immediately, well, it's not out of respect because if you had any respect for me, you wouldn't have signed him in the first place. And then he said, well, there are two things, to quote you, there are a lot more than two things. But the two things that Keegan had said at the time was, one, you've signed him which means that you don't have a problem with what he said, which is the most worrying thing. And if that's not true, the second thing is that you've signed him because you put your values to one side and you think you've got a player well, who's just going to get you an extra few places the, in Super League and a few yeah, more this, tries, which this, is the, even well, they're, they're, just they're as in, They're in will, you get to the crux of the problem. And well done. for friend. What you've done is got to the crux of the problem. Israel Folau's value is greater than his comments are worth. So one in year the contract, league. this is worth it for Catalan to bring him in. Yeah, no, his brand is bigger than the negative that comes with the perception. According of to brand. Catalan, we'll see, according to Catalan, we'll see. Yeah. and according and to that's, what, that's and, why they've signed him to because it. they value his performance on the field more than all the controversy and all the hatred that he's he's spouted on social media. And, that, that, how do you, and what do you think and about that? Ju- I think it's wrong, and I don't think Catalan should if, sign if you, it. But do you know what happens is, if you're talented at sport on the field, you get a second chance, or you get... No, but this isn't a second when chance. When the talent pool, he's, he's, or third chance, whatever. No, but it's not even that, because he doesn't see it as a second chance, because he's got nothing to apologise for. But but society sees it as a, a second chance, so he, or them giving him a lifeline. Well, his chance If, I, if I'd said those things, do you think any club would sign me? No, no way. No way. 
No way. Exactly. But no, so that's what it, exactly. that's, how, that's how fickle sport is that you get a second chance despite saying horrific things because you're talented and that's the be all. But this is the reason he's not playing for the Wallabies, or he stopped playing for the Wallabies, is because there's a bigger talent, big enough talent pool yeah. to where. And Qantas it, said we're not going to pay you millions and millions. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So it's a business decision. Of then. course. It's what a moral, the business moral decision, decision is 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 at forefront. So the insurance this. policy in this is that if he does anything, there's a clause in his contract where it's immediately terminated if he repeats any of his comments. So therefore, he's agreed to shut up, keep his beliefs, and just yeah, play but, rugby. But but what he believes is what he believes. Are you telling me that because he can't say it, it doesn't mean it's true? No, but he has to, if it's well, saying it's quiet, different then, thing then because it's absolutely, absolutely. Because because so it goes back as, to as if you're a gay person who's in, the, like I said before, you've not come out as gay and you see someone spouting that shite on social media. Do you think that makes you feel good about no, being true to yourself and all that? But that's why I people? said and it's that's the most ill informed use of his profile, which was created through rugby, to then put your personal beliefs across, which is ironic because I'm probably putting my personal beliefs across as well. But Dangerous. He, he used his profile through rugby, which is an autocratic employment situation where you get paid X amount of money to turn up and to do certain things. And he chose to go against that to give his personal opinion on something. And as a result, he was unemployable in, in Australia, but deemed employable by Catalan. And well, the only re the only reason he's he's got here because Super League. I spoke to Rob Elston. He said if it was his final decision, he wouldn't have he would have vetoed it absolutely one hundred percent. He says the game has made the wrong decision, but that's come from the RFL. who have done their due diligence and they've looked at it and seen what happened with the Rugby Australia settlement case, and they couldn't stop him with his work to write to come and play in the Super League. Yeah, but it's interesting, isn't it, that you can't stop somebody like who has that view. That's what well, the legal situation, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, look, for, Louis's gone very very quiet, and he's, he's, I he's still he was here. There. <laughs> Sorry. I was just like, I didn't like this. It's safer for you to stay quiet during yeah. that conversation. Uh, Lou, I mean, like, look, from, a, from a situation where he then comes to Super League and the 11 away grounds that he goes to, he is going to get absolute shit, isn't he, from 90% of those. I mean, like Wigan already have said it on their Pride Day for LGBTQ+, yeah. plus, that that's when it's going to be when they play Catalan on yeah. the 22nd of May. Um, it's not just going to be pantomime booing. It's going to be nasty. And players are going to go for it. Players are going to try and smash can. it. Yeah, it quite possibly can. I, yeah, it, I, I don't think it, it's shined a good light on Catalan signing him. I don't think it is. But I'd like you said, he's going to go to grands and he's probably going to get a lot of, especially when the grands are right on the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be nice. But you as a player, does, does that go through? Were you not trying? If you can get a hit no, on him, but no. The, as no? a rugby player, it's not like that. No, no, way, no, way. no way. But do you know what he could do? He could open up discussion about what's acceptable to say in terms of your, your views, whether religious or whatever, and, and maybe open up the debate regarding the, the, the stigma towards homosexuality and Christian beliefs and hopefully use it as um, a vehicle to kind of shut down Bubble. these these yeah. these whatever you said and like i said at the start as well his views are very extreme end of mm. christianity there's still millions of people mm. on this planet who have the same belief but there's a lot of people who have some more liberal moderate views on religion watch we, the, we, we can have used it as a, as a vehicle to promote lgbt rights by having um the gay um Pride Day. Uh, yeah, Pride Day at their match against Catalan. So mm. if it can open up discussion and, and use in a positive way, then that's the only thing you can go off. Mm. Yeah, and I think, look, the, the, this is an interesting thing is because there's like an era of separatism in the world now. So everyone ring fences himself and has separate views. And people take a lot of joy in you voted to leave the EU, you voted to remain, you know, you don't believe in homosexuality, you're a homosexual, you know, you're, you, you know, Every single thing has become ring fenced in. That's a particular view. That's a particular view. Well, what, 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 where's empathy gone? Has empathy died? What do because, you mean? well, is in can Israel fall out not empathize with other people? Can he not his, look? His religion doesn't allow him to do that. In no, that but, but that's what I'm saying. Empathy's dead then. Well, because it isn't you've as extreme got, views. You, yeah. you have to take the time to consider that everyone's different, that everybody has walked a different path that everybody could have different beliefs and to take time to consider and be considerate to your fellow human beings and to understand their path. And that's the aim. That should be the aim for me. And if rugby league had anything to preach to the outside world, it's empathy. And I'd, and I'd argue that's higher up the priority list in Israel's faith is empathizing and loving your neighbor than going to hell if you do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I'd agree. 
all got very serious, didn't it? All of a sudden, I wasn't even yeah. on. on yeah, the, I was can you just say? Can you just drop a C bomb to bring it back? <laughs> no, to no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I can quite easily do. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it's gonna be, that's gonna it's gonna rumble on and rumble on that debate, and it seems to me, and I'm sure to millions of people who've seen it who aren't even in the rugby league world or have any interest in super, in super league, it just seems highly unnecessary as a sign, especially when you look at it as a one year contract. It's probably a route back to something for him back in Australia as baby steps back. The French there are very liberal though. Are they? Mm. Well, that's why it, it, it wouldn't oh have gone Dieu. down anywhere else, would it? Oh, ma, oh mon Dieu. Oh mon Dieu. Ne montre pas. On peut pas ne montre pas. Will can speak French, can't you, Will? Oh, tu es un salope, lui, hein? Tu es un culé, tu es un salope. Oh, oui, oui, oui. Sacré bleu. Mange two, mange two, <laughs> Rodney. Mange two, <laughs> Louis, top man for coming in. Uh, <coughs> wish you. you all the best for this year. It's going to be a massive year for you. Obviously, your testimony as well, but I mean, on the pitch competitively, it, it's huge, isn't it? It could be another League Leader's Shield. The way that you've Destroyed these boys, even though Mark was. Where were you, where were you watching from? Like I made up the story at the beginning. You were watching home, lonely uh, and cold. Wasn't selected. But were, were you at home, lonely and cold? No, no, I was at the ground. We Speak. saw each other. We saw each other. We had a chat. Everything all right? You need a hug. I wasn't selected in the same way that you're not you selected hug. for many um, prime time TV shots. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. It's a yeah. joke. Yeah. Not sat here because he's doing well, is he? No. <laughs> he's on the way. <laughs> he's on the way. You'll get there. Well, used to be on the BBC gravy train. I'm very proud. Pruned, very proud. Lovely to meet you, Lou. Thank you. Lovely to meet you, Mark, John. It's been As great. always, it's been it's a been pleasure. Great. It has been it's been great. emotional. Um, don't forget, join the conversation. What do you think about those thoughts from John Wilkin on Israel Folau? Oh, Hashtag wow. out of your league. Uh, get involved on there. You can download wherever you get your podcasts on uh, iTunes. On It's not called iTunes anymore. What is it called? Apple, Apple Podcasts. Podcasts. Spotify. Spotify download it on YouTube. YouTube. Download it on your iPod. Leave a comment. You might want to say something about John. Well, hopefully we've got some headlines oh, there. We'll put yeah. some snippets out. Controversial, but that's John Wilkin. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye, little buggers. Bye-bye.